What's up, guys? You know who it is, and this is a Q&A video for Juggalo Demon 41377. I've seen people like CPN, Cali Green, Too Fresh, Don Chaos all do Q&A videos, and I'm making a video for my question for you for two reasons. One, I think that more ninjas should ask and tell the answers to these questions, and you know, quite honestly, I don't want to make a video saying, ask me questions, because you guys should know that you can anytime you want to, and I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to give you my answer as well, so that you know, and if anybody else wants to answer this question, or ask Juggalo Demon or me a question, just do it, you know what I mean? You don't need to be told that we want to answer your questions, you know it, we'll answer your questions, ninjas in action, motherfucko. All right, a lot of people will throw out this information, like posers, fair weather fans, and nobody gives a shit. Nobody wants to know. But real juggalos have real stories. And I want to know what the circumstances were to you discovering ICP. I mean, this isn't a chat room, so one answer... Um, you know, one, two word answers are fine when you're just typing, but you're, you're making a video here. So I want, I want to know like how you discovered ICP, what songs they were, when it was. And I'll tell you right now, when I discovered ICP, it was really just, it felt like, um, a circumstance, you know, it felt like, well, first of all, it was Easter Sunday. Every Easter Sunday we have dinner with, um, one of my friend's families. And so my friend was showing off his stereo that he worked very hard for, paid off every cent of it. And this dude's one of the hardest workers I know, and he's one of the biggest music enthusiasts I know. And his stereo was huge. It was wicked expensive and just, you know, like 5, 10 CD changer, subwoofers, like monster cables. This thing was hooked up. And he's blasting Pantera, Ozzy, Digital Underground, you know, 311, uh, tons of stuff. Just kind of blowing my mind away with uh, a real nice selection of music that that his stereo made sound so good. And then he puts on the Riddle Box, and I believe the first song he played was A Little Something Something. And I'm looking at the track listing. And on the back of the riddle box, there's no numbers. I wrote the numbers in myself. I don't know if you guys can see that, but because um, I thought it was the twelfth track was track twelve. So, anyways, once we cleared that up, um, I actually didn't buy this for myself until I took the SATs for the second time because I really uh, sucked at it the first time. So I studied and took it again, and to reward myself, I bought three CDs of new music. I wanted to treat myself with something that I didn't already have. And I'm buying the Riddle Box, and then I'm buying Iron Maiden, Best of the Beast. And, uh, oh, that's the back. Let me tell you something. This CD here, it's a double CD. So, I really got four CDs, but the, the other CD I got was Cool as Shaker K. But two out of three aren't bad, because ICP and Iron Maiden are like my favorite bands today, still. And I bought my first CDs from them at the same time. The following Easter Sunday, right, 97, I, I wanted to tell Tommy that I got the Riddle Box, and I was also a fan. And, you know, and I think I got some good information to share with him on Easter. And then he tells me, oh, yeah, well, ICP is playing in Massachusetts tomorrow. <laughs> so we were going to go. But uh, Juggalo Demon, you're from Worcester. You might remember this. In 1997, after Easter, we were hit with a snowstorm. School was canceled. And I was a senior. I was about to graduate school. So it was kind of funny that a snowstorm came and canceled school after Easter. And... That ICP show was canceled. We didn't. If we had seen that show, it would have changed a lot because we would have known about the Great Malenko coming out. Um, and I also remember getting on the phone with one of Tommy's other friends, whose name was also Tom, but his last name's Wilson. And I've never met this guy. 
and I'm on the phone with him going, cheer up, Wilson, you're going to see ICP tomorrow. I guess he was under the weather. Um, you know, years ago, because it was in 1997, you know, Wilson is still one of my good friends. And, and Tommy is forever my brother and always going to be my best friend. And he's out in Pennsylvania doing his thing. I'm still in the greater Boston area. You know, Wilson's still up in the North Shore. You know, I got a lot of love for my homies, even if I don't see them on a regular basis. But you guys know how it is. And this snowstorm that canceled everything prolonged my becoming a juggalo it really did i probably would have become a juggalo that very day instead of uh september 7th i'm sorry september 3rd of 97 is the day that i became a juggalo because that's the day i got my mind blown away by icp in concert and the whole audience in the mosh pit and you know we can talk about that we can talk about the shows at another time but those coincidences that you know, kind of made it a little bit more special when we discovered Malenko. Here's what happened. We're crew heads. And Vince Neal was reunited with Motley Crue for Generation Swine. And that was dropping, okay? And this is July. I forget what day it was, but... Uh, we went to the store. I mean, can you imagine like that movie, Dazed and Confused, only in the 90s, okay? We were partying. We were like tailgating the release of a record. And I remember jumping on a trampoline, cooking on the barbecue grill, going down to Newbury Comics, and picking up our Generation Swine CD, and also seeing this sitting right next to it in the new release section. And, by the way, this Generation Swine CD really goes like this. It's upside down. Everything in it is upside down. Um, if you flip through the booklet, so this is the way it normally would be, but if you need to read it, you read it this way, and everything goes backwards from right to left. So the very first page is the last page. Anyways, Generation Swine, up is down, front is back. Everything's backwards. And it did feel that way because when we went to, into the store, walked around with our Malenkos in hand, came back to the front of the CD section, you know, the new, new release section, and all the other great Malenkos were gone off the shelf. So we bought our copies and walked out the door, and a couple of weeks later we hear about... Um, the whole Hollywood Records, Disney fiasco, Gay Day. We saw those uh, MTV news clippings. And then they re-released it with um, a couple extra tracks. And you can see that I didn't let uh, no numbers on the tracks fool me ever again. This is my first copy of Malenko, and I numbered the tracks <laughs> so I wouldn't have any confusion like I did on Riddlebox. But here's my uh, second copy that has, you know, the Ned and Game, Boogie Woogie Woo, and Under the Moon. That was the circumstances that I discovered ICP's music. And I'll tell you, it was when the second copy of Great Malenko came out with those three extra songs that kind of made me really pay close attention to, I guess the bigger picture that they were painting. So whatever it was, the date that this second version of Malenko came out, whether it be August or I forget if it was in the same month, I feel like it was a couple of months later. Um, and when it was re-released, it was, you know, it was humorous to me to watch the media, you know, make a big deal out of it and, you know, kind of, you know, telling a story, but not telling the full story. If you paid attention to ICP back then, there were lots of different ways that they were talking to us. You could get their uh, mailings, and so you get little flyers, but InsaneClownPosse.com was up and running back then. And they had different um, news bulletins, per se, you know, whether it be Jelly Nuts or, you know... They had their own masked ninja reports. This was before the weekly freaklies. 
and the weekly freaklies were uh, in writing originally. That they were called weekly freaklies, and then they became the weekly freakly weeklies when they became a television show. You know what I mean? And before the weekly freaklies, there was the hotline. I completely forgot about the hotline. A lot of juggalos today that maybe grew out of this shit, they won't tell you other newbies that there used to be a hotline that still actually fucking exists. So go call the hotline and see what's going on. It's probably Corp, you know, with a message from the last live event. That hotline has been a major source of information for juggalos, but now we have the Hatchet Herald, we have ICP on Facebook and Twitter, and and then there's, you know psychopathic videos on YouTube. They use their YouTube channel, you know, to their to their best ability to advertise to us. Right? They're independent artists. <laughs> Let's not overcomplicate things. Juggalos, I got mad love. Uh Juggalo Demon, I wanna know like what you first heard from ICP when you discovered them. And everybody else, make a video response and tell me how you discovered ICP. You don't have to front. You don't have to lie. Even if it was later on, think about it. If if ICP's old shit CD came out a couple years ago and some kid sees that and listens to it and falls in love with it, they are no less a juggalo than me who's been down for 16 years because... Just because I discovered Iron Maiden when they had their best of CD collection, and I like went back and bought a whole bunch of albums, and I've seen them live a, a couple of times now because they're still fucking killing it. You know, A Matter of Life and Death was like number one on the record charts in America for the first time ever, like three decades into the fucking game. ICP's been around for 20 years. Some of us were lucky enough to f discover them when they were earlier in their in their adventures right but i didn't feel like i was uh you know an og because there were ogs that had been down since carnival of carnage and ringmaster and people like Vinny the icp kid who's been collecting all of their promotional material from way early on and I'm collecting that shit, too, because I'm a juggalo, you know what I mean? And it's not a pissing contest. It's just a passion of mine, all right? I got my Star Wars toys from when I was a kid, okay? I've got my comic books from when I was a kid. And as an adult, I don't fucking collect any of that shit anymore. But I, I don't collect baseball cards anymore. I don't even really follow sports. I fell in love with music in my teenage years, in my early teens or preteen years. And music has been keeping me going music is what i turn to when i'm at my lowest points in life and icp's music has messages in it that are really uplifting it has stories that are really entertaining and quite honestly if i'm not listening to music i'm watching movies because i love stories and i love getting caught up in um you know stories i read i love stephen king stories um icp's stories are awesome it's almost like interactive the way that because you're hearing it in your head you know you, now we're like listening and relating and role playing and all the people that love the wicked shit you know what i'm saying like we can get it we can talk about this later but i'm just saying that um discovering icp was something that like saved my life because there were some points in my life when i was feeling like really down and the messages that icp dove out in a slow like serial type way by following them um it just turned everything around for me and, and kind of gave me a new perspective and um you know there's a lot of juggalos out there that are not comfortable in their own skin but they're still you know trying to figure shit out and along the way you know you're either supporting or you're not supporting icp so you know do your thing. I'm Beastmaster. Ninjas in action. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. They roll.